Hey everyone, it's uh, David Barnett from davidcbarnett.com, the blog site, YouTube channel, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play podcast, where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses. Today, I've got Brian Diener from Centurica.com, and Brian and the company that he, he works with, they're experts in doing due diligence for online businesses, websites, all that kind of thing. And the reason why I'm having him on today is that Brian and I met a few months ago and recorded an interview uh, because he was one of the expert guests for my business buyer adventure group coaching program. And it's interesting, just before I hit record, we were saying how we recorded that interview and we talked a lot about due diligence for online properties, but it was before the pandemic. And now we're rejoining here in July, 2020, uh, because his recording was released into the coaching group this month. So we're, we're getting back here together and, you know, the topic of conversation obviously is going to be about the changes that have come about as a result of the pandemic. You know, uh, Brian, why don't, why don't we start off, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and the type of work that you guys do, and then let's get right into it because, you know, there are brick and mortar businesses out there who have now become online businesses. And so the space that you guys operate in has changed dramatically in just a few months. Yeah, certainly. Well, David, good to, good to be talk, talking again. A little bit about Centurica. We, you know, as you said, provide due diligence and advisory services for buyers and sellers of online-based businesses. And that can range from e-commerce, content, software businesses, and businesses that have brick and mortar, you know, exposure, but also sell online. So it's a range of businesses and um, we're, you know, a little bit like a home inspector right? trying to help people through that process, verify the information and, and understand what it is that they're actually purchasing. So, uh, Brian, what were the first sort of big new different things that started to show up on Centurica string, uh, radar screen once the pandemic hit initially? Yeah, so once the pandemic hit or as we kind of moved into it, we were already kind of monitoring it in China because a lot of the e-commerce diligence that we were working on right, had supply chain exposure overseas. Okay. And so we were starting to see slowdowns, factories shut down, people were, were kind of not running out of inventory, but you could forecast and say, okay, you, you might be a little close here. And as things started to happen in the United States and we went into you know, lockdown in, in various states, you know, just buyers and sellers understandably got nervous, right? Or there, there's more concern. And so the, the market kind of, you know, transactions just slowed down a whole lot um, as people kind of moved out of the market, right? Sellers were trying to see what was going to happen to their businesses and buyers were, were taking care of other things, right? They might have had a day job or, or something else and they were going to focus on that. But, you know, after I would say that that was kind of end of May or sorry, end of March, early April, I would say by the end of April, you know, get, going into May, um, we, we kind of saw things come, you know, we started to see businesses listed for sale again. And a lot of the e-commerce businesses, you know, actually weren't seeing declines, right? They're seeing increases in sales and Amazon's having to limit stuff being shipped in. And, and so there were, were complications there, but we kind of saw a reversal of trends. And, and now, you know, as you've said, more and more people are into this market and, and a lot of businesses have become online businesses very quickly. So when, when I think of online due diligence, I think a lot often about, you know, sort of websites and traffic and making sure that there's legitimate numbers behind what's being told to a buyer. And a lot of the time, you know, today, almost every business has some kind of online presence. And, and that generally has to do with marketing and presence and generating sales. But you guys investigate things like Amazon FBA businesses and e-commerce businesses where you actually trace back all of the data through the, the, the you know, the, the shopping platform back through the purchasing and just kind of are able to tie in the whole activity to the p l is that correct exactly yeah so normally what we'll do is kind of our standard process is we'll rebuild all of the financials from the root sources that we can get access to so that's going to be right sales from amazon invoices from suppliers bank statements credit card statements it's not that we don't you know we don't use the seller's quickbooks but so many businesses in this category are are keeping their financials on an Excel spreadsheet or, you know, they do them once a year at tax season. And so it's really hard to make a informed financial decision off of those. So we want to rebuild monthly versions. Okay. And so, you know, I, I witnessed what you did, how there was this kind of like freeze up, there's fear, what's going to happen, who knows what's going on. And then a realization that if you're selling online, you can do contactless delivery, you can still be in business. And now we can you know, gain market share from the bricks and mortars guys who are forced to close. And so 
what, did that have an impact on what you were seeing as far as people suddenly wanting more for their businesses in, in this particular space? Yeah, I think it's maybe not more. Um, well, it depends a little bit, I guess, on the business, but we, we've seen, I think, more buyers come into the space, right? Which I think over time will inflate the multiples that people are getting for businesses because these buyers that used to maybe be more interested in commercial real estate or some of these other categories, um, they're now seeing the returns here and that these businesses are still open and they're thriving during this time. Um, they're moving into this space. They tend to be a little more sophisticated and have more funds. And so I, I think that will drive up prices over time. And there's certainly been more interest in businesses lately than, you know, there had been kind of earlier this year. Okay. Now where I happen to live here on the East coast of Canada, we were very fortunate that <clears throat> when the pandemic started to spread, the government here reacted very quickly and we actually were able to to really flatten the curve to, to zero at one point. We didn't have any infections at all. And we're one of the first places in Canada to start reopening. And at, at this time right now, everything outside of large sporting and concert events is now operating in some way. And so a few weeks ago, many states started to undertake the same kind of thing where they were trying to open up different categories of business. Did you see have you seen any data to, to kind of show that some of that bricks and mortar business that went online has gone back to the traditional sort of mode of doing business or is it too early to see that yet? It's probably a little too early to see that just based on the limited data that we're looking at. You know, I think with specific Amazon businesses, you know, saw them restrict some shipments to, so they would only have essential goods and saw a really big couple of months um, and maybe a little bit of a, a slowdown or stabilization, let's call it, in, in June across a couple of businesses. And so I think there's, we haven't seen maybe a, a, a deceleration, but, but the kind of, you know, the huge ramp up of e-commerce sales, you know, maybe is, is going to stabilize at this point here. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I occasionally buy things from Amazon too. And, and here in Canada, we have a reward program called Air Miles and Amazon is an Air Miles sponsor. So you can make purchases on, Air, on Amazon and earn these points, these Air Mile points. But during the height of the pandemic, they suspended that activity. So they were no longer, I'm, I'm guessing they weren't spending the money because it probably cost them money to participate in this program. They weren't spending the money because they, I guess they knew they kind of had a captive market and they were sort of flat out. And then I noticed two weeks ago, they were back on the roster. So they're, they're, they've rejoined that program. And so to me, that kind of indicates that they've seen the normal competitive forces have kind of rebalanced back into the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, I think from what we're seeing, right, they're kind of open for all shipments. We are still hearing stories about delays and, and things like that of, of getting items and shipping items in. So I think they're still you know, from what I hear, operating it, it you know, a uh, full capacity, but it's probably not the, or, or maybe they've adjusted to uh, the increased demand a little better than, uh, than, you know, right when the pandemic hit. So you're based in California? I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. So, so what have you seen as far as, you know, the people you're connected to and, 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 you know, the, the businesses that you interact with down there? Have you seen that kind of, you know, everything goes online and then things start to come back a little bit? What's going on there? Yeah, so we were uh, one of the first states to, to reopen. I think our governor did it before, uh, you know, before even the president said to do so, reopened. And the, you know, I, I think at first things looked okay, but now lately across most of the, the southern United States and, you know, Texas and California, they're seeing surges in cases. And so, you know, there started to be more mass policies. And I think, you know, we might be headed you know, kind of for a, a, a W shape, you know, where we reopen a little bit and then maybe go back a little bit. Um, so I think it's, it's, again, still pretty early to tell there, but, but people still seem to be pretty, um, you know, sheltered in place. Atlanta is obviously mm -hmm. famous for its traffic and, and that certainly isn't uh, normal right now. You can get around the city pretty easily. So things have not quite opened back up here. You know, one of the things that I think people in business, you know, despise more than anything is uncertainty is just not knowing, you know, because if you don't know what's going to happen, you can't really make any kind of plan, right? It's just constantly being defensive or, or, or trying to position yourself for any opportunity that that might come about. And, you know, one of the, one of the concerns that I have, or I guess I'm anxious to see 2020 end because I want to start to see what 
is actually going to be recorded on the books for this year for a lot of different businesses and different industries. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's frightening because I know just from the financials I've seen so far from a lot of businesses that have a big, you know, sort of retail presence or hospitality businesses, things like that. A lot of them are still open, but it's only because of different government interventions, you know, programs, you know, loan deferrals, payment holidays, that kind of thing. And so it, you know, I'm cautious. The people that I talk to are cautious and um, I, you know, is you deal with these online businesses every day. Is there any bit of advice that you would want to be able to give to the average business person who may be thinking that it's time to radically change the way they do business, maybe even close something down. That's a retail face-to-face kind of thing and devote themselves entirely online. Do you think, what would you say to that person? I, I'd say that, you know, that's obviously a, a pretty dramatic shift, but I, I think that, you know, this is a, a key moment where so many people are shifting online and customers, right, they still need to buy. And so if you've been retail and you don't have a major online presence, it's probably never been easier to set up some of those things on Shopify, on WordPress, on you know, Squarespace. So starting that, I think, you know, to me is a no brainer right now. Um, why would you not meet your customers where they are? And, you know, that channel can can go down when, when things go back to more normal. But um, I would think that there's no real reason to stop or to, to not start doing something like that. And for people who, who decide to do that, what are some of the most common mistakes that you guys see, you know, people doing when they're when they're trying to make a, a bold move into the online space? Yeah, I think some people jump in and they're not quite ready to track and fully understand things, right? So they launch this new website, they spend all this money on, they spend a bunch of money in advertising. It isn't, it's just kind of attracting eyeballs. It's not actually attracting customers. So I would start small, right? Hopefully you have at least some customer names and email list, and, and you can reach out to your favorite customers and get their phone numbers or emails and, and start small and build you know, more organic traffic. Um, there's no need to go out and kind of blast things out to the world with a massive, you know, $10,000 in Facebook's ad, ads in the first month. If, if you really don't, you know, kind of know what you're doing there. So test the water, see what resonates with your users. Um, and, and then kind of take that. Yeah. What, what you just said reminded me of an old IBM commercial from about 10 or 15 years ago where a bunch of entrepreneurs were sitting around a computer and their website went live and it said, you know, like one, two sales and they were all high five on each other. And then it quickly went to a thousand, then it went to 10,000 and then they all started to panic. <laughs> Do you yeah. remember that? Do you remember that? Ad? Because, you know, really there, there's, there's two sides to this. You can spend a lot of money and not get the results you can also create something that could, you know, end up being a bit of a tiger that you have to hang on to by the tail that, you know, could get away from you, right? Yeah, exactly. If it, things really kick off, go viral. Um, certainly, that would be a good thing, good problem to have, but um, you need to, I guess, yeah, make sure you, you've got the inventory and processes in place before kind of, yeah, going, uh, you know, opening everything up. Awesome. Well, uh, Brian, thanks for taking a, a few minutes out of your day to share with us. Um, just, you know, if anyone wants is looking at buying a business that has something going on online and they want some expert help in doing due diligence, why don't you just quickly tell us what you do and how people can get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, we're happy to help anyone who's looking at an online business. You know, that could be e-commerce content, a software business. We work with, with entrepreneurs and, and business buyers of, of all different sizes. Feel free to check out our website at centurica.com and we're happy to kind of chat, set up a free 15 minute um, phone call just to, to learn more about our process and team and how we might be able to help. Yeah. And, and just for people who are curious, the reason I, w- I actually met Brian was because one of the members in the business buyer adventure group coaching program hired Centurica to help with some due diligence work in an acquisition that they were working on and came back to me with nothing but good things to say about you and the company. And then that's what led me to, to reach out to you guys and, and to try and get someone to come on to the show. So I, I know from, you know, from one of your customers that you guys have done some good work. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. Pleasure talking and yeah, um, feel free to, to reach out or, or continue to, to stay in contact about everything that's going on and we'll see what things look like in a couple months, maybe. Awesome. And I'll put the website in the show notes down below for anyone who's listening while driving in the car or something. And with that, Brian, thanks. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, David. All right. Bye.